is a very impressive young gardener. She's super keen, really interested in growing unusual stuff. Um, so let's welcome Emma. So I love tomatoes. I think that tomatoes are a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun with tomatoes, and I think that they are my favorite crop. And so last year, I grew 53 varieties. I harvested over 2,000 tomatoes, and I had a lot of fun with them. They were on the roof, they were in planters, raised beds, they were right in the ground. Then they were growing on trellises and cages. And it was a lot of fun growing so many varieties of one type of fruit. And so this is me and Linda's greenhouse. And Linda is the tomato lady. She grows hundreds of varieties of tomatoes. And so I went to her greenhouse that day. And so I came home with about 20 plants. And when I already had 30 plants at home, that was a lot of plants for me. So we had to make space and we made planters. And we had a lot of fun. But tomatoes, why is it tomatoes? So I chose tomatoes because I think it's just amazing the tomatoes come in so many different colors, shapes, and sizes. So I have had a three pound tomato, and I've had a purple tomato, and I've had a green tomato. And I think it's just really cool that one crop can be so unique. So I'm Emma, I'm 11 years old, I'm in grade six, and I love gardening. And I think what makes me love gardening is all the cool crops. I don't think I would be as interested without those purple carrots, mini cucumbers, and purple tomatoes. And so this is a yellow raspberry. And I think that yellow raspberries are absolutely delicious. They taste good, they look cool. This is a variety called fall gold. And it looks very nice and it's fun to uh, pick off the bush. But what makes it cool is you'll never see a yellow raspberry in the store and it's very unlikely. And so I consider lots of things that you don't find in the store a cool crop. And so when I'm going through a CD Saturday, like today, looking at all the seeds and going through all the seeds from last year, I look for the weirdest possible seeds I can find. I look for the seeds that are purple. I look for the ones that you will never see in the store. So if you come to my garden, you will see it, and it's so different, it's definitely a lot different from what you would expect. So this is me and my brother Quinn, and I've grown them interested in gardening, and they find it also very interesting because of the cool crops. They love all the weird things that they can find in the garden. And so the three main factors that I think make a cool crop the most cool are color, size, and taste. So if something is very, very brightly colored, if something is really, really tall or really, really small, or if something has a very, very sweet or sour taste, I think that will catch my attention. So this is a tomato. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. And I'm a bit mad at my dad because he took this picture of this amazing looking tomato that I want to grow, but he didn't save the name. And so now I'm here and I'm wondering, what type of tomato is this? I want to grow this tomato. But I don't know because he took the picture without saving the name. But I just love the bright colors of the orange, green, and purple. So Sunrise Bumblebee, this is a cherry tomato, and I love cherry tomatoes a lot. I think that they're great for kids because of their size, but this one really does look like a sunrise because it's a small yellow cherry tomato with orange and red stripes up it, and it just looks absolutely amazing. Black cherry, this is a tomato I got from Linda, and I think it is a great tomato, and I think it actually has more of a purpley color, but what I found cool about this tomato is I was growing in how there's like little uh, leaves that go over the tomato. They're on it, on it, top of it in a star shape. And so when I picked that tomato, there's a green star shape on top of the tomato where the leaves had blocked out the sun. And so that's how I remember this tomato. And I think it's just beautiful how you can have a purple tomato. This is Canadian Sunset, and, when, and it's a beefsteak tomato. And when I think of beefsteak tomato, I think of red tomatoes. I think of big red ones that you find in the store or that my dad grows. But this tomato is unique because it's a yellow beefsteak tomato. And it really does look like a sunrise, it really does look like a Canadian sunset because of the colors. And it's a yellow tomato with little hinges of orange and red up the side. And this is winter tomato. It's not my favorite tomato. It doesn't have the nicest color, nicest taste, 
But my dad grows this tomato, and what's cool about it is it keeps for such a long time. So we call a winter tomato. I've heard it also called long keeper tomato. And it is a tomato with a really thick skin, and so we harvest, harvest these tomatoes right at the end of the season, and we leave them on cookie sheets in our cold room. And then all through the winter, we make as they ripen in our cold room, we make bruschetta, and we make tomato sauce. But it's really cool because sometimes we have these tomatoes all the way until March. And so we have a lot of fun with these tomatoes just because we can have fresh tomatoes all winter long. And so lettuce. Lettuce is something just like tomatoes. I talk a lot about tomatoes because I've had uh, most tomatoes. And so lettuce is something cool, and again, it's because of variety. And I love how lettuce comes in so many different shapes, sizes, and colors. And so this is the lettuce at the Montreal Botanical Gardens, and I went there last summer. It was really nice, but of course, the vegetable section was my favorite. And so I looked there, and I just love how there's the bright red and green mixed together in an amazing pattern. And one day, I hope maybe I can actually plant the lettuce at the Montreal Botanical Gardens. And so there's lots and lots of different types. There's the deer tongue lettuce, the oak leaf lettuce, and then there's the traditional iceberg lettuce. So these are carrots. To me, they're almost like lettuce and tomatoes. And I like carrots a lot because, again, of the colors. And so on the, uh, on, on your right, no, on your left, you have this carrots that you might see in the store. They're yellow, orange, you'll normally see those. And the middle is one of my very favorite carrots ever, and it's called Purple Haze. And it's just a beautiful, gorgeous carrot. It has a purple outside with a brilliant yellow, with a brilliant orange inside. It just looks amazing. You'll slice open this carrot, and it's such a surprise. And I had a lot of fun with carrots this year, because I was growing carrots, and I, I was looking through the seed catalogs, and I came across this carrot that was round. And it's a round carrot, and I thought, I've never heard of that before. I've never even seen it before. And so seeing and hearing of a round carrot was just pretty amazing. So back to the yellow raspberry. This is a yellow raspberry. You'll never find these in the store at the moment. They're really cool. This is a variety called fall gold. So you'll have a, have a crop in the summer, and you'll also have a crop in the fall. Uh, these are a yellow gold color, and they're really nice because they uh, stand out against the green bush. And so my friends will come over, and we will go to the back raspberry patch, and we will go and we'll eat all the raspberries. And so never mind having a stack of raspberries tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so shelling beans. These are shelling beans. I think that they're a lot of fun for everyone. It's just fun to pick them, and then you get to shell them once they're dried. And so this is a variety called Christmas Lima Bean. And I got it from a couple of years ago from Colette, who's here today with Urban Harvest. And I really like it because of its colors. I love how it's red and white, and it really does remind me of Christmas. And there are lots of different types of them. And I think that it's really cool that beans can come in so many different shapes, colors, and sizes. And I was growing uh, beans last year, and I came across a bean called rattlesnake bean. And it was a bean that I grew, and it was green with red splotches and stripes. And it just looked absolutely amazing. And so size. If something is really, really big or really, really small, it will make me think, wow, that's weird. Because you don't see things that are really big or really small in stores. So this is a uh, Mexican gherkin. It's also called cucamelon or mouse melon. Uh, it's available, uh, you can find it lots of places today. And it, to me, it looks like a mini watermelon. It really does, but it isn't oh, yellow or red on the inside. It's actually a relative of the cucumber. And so it grows on a vine, and it's fun to pick because it's so small. It's smaller than a loony, and they really do taste like mini cucumbers and look like mini watermelons. And they're just amazing that something can be like that. And so this is my brother, and me and my brothers, and all of our friends, when they come over, we are quite smitten with this plant, because it's so unique that something can be this weird, something that you'll never see in the store. Okay, back to tomatoes. I love tomatoes, and so I love the colors. That's probably my favorite factor of tomatoes, but I absolutely love the size of tomatoes. I think it's great when a tomato is really, really big or really, really small. 
So I grew currant tomatoes the other year, and they were the size of currant, which grow in a bush, and they're very small. Uh, but this is a really big tomato that I grew, and it's a variety called Lebanese Mountain. And so my dad, he got this variety in, from a friend who had a roadside stand, and he brought these tomatoes from Lebanon. And so my dad saves to see, saved seeds, and we've been growing this. We've had a lot of fun with it. But it was really cool because I grew these tomatoes, and I got some of the biggest tomatoes I've ever grown. I got an almost three pound tomato. And to me, that was pretty big. And it's really encouraging to keep going with tomatoes. It was almost three pounds, but maybe if the squirrels didn't eat, eat the top off, it may have been three pounds. But I had a lot of fun. It was really cool to grow tomatoes so big. And it just really surprised me, because you're watching it, the tomato grow on the plant over the summer, and then you pick it, and it's almost all, almost all red. And it's just really cool that it can be this big. And so I like giant vegetables. I think that they're really cool. And so this year, me and Dad joined the Giant Vegetable Growers Association of Ontario. And so this is a picture of, the, uh, of a giant pumpkin plant that I got from my grandfather before we joined. And he got it from a friend who is also in the association. And so we tried to grow this. And we grew it in a tire for warmth. And we grew it on a uh, tarp to keep the weeds down. And we had a lot of fun. It was really cool. And so, but uh, we grew it, and the squirrels, they decided that they would chew the stem off to annoy us. And so we didn't actually succeed in growing a giant pumpkin. But I'm really excited, because I was talking to someone on the phone, and he is from the association, and he said the first time that he grew a giant pumpkin, it was like a, it was like a giant Volkswagen Beetle growing in his garden. <laughs> and I thought that would be really cool, to come home and be, have a Volkswagen in my garden. And my parents asked me, where's my driver's license? <laughs> and so this is a trombetta squ summer squash. And I like squash, it's not my favorite, but it's really cool because of how long it can get. And so this is one that we found hanging from our tree. And I was, it got more excited about squash because I, I went to uh, Martin Farms or the Veggie Guy Farms and they had, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a trombetta summer squash, but they had another type of squash that was almost as long as me. And I thought, wow, that's so amazing. It's so unpredictable. It was really cool. Giant sunflowers is something that everyone loves. Everyone loves giant sunflower seeds. They just like the fact that it's a flower and it's ornamental. I love them, the birds love them, and of course the squirrels love them. And so I, I got really excited about giant sunflowers because I decided I'm gonna build a giant sunflower fort. So this year I'm gonna, instead of having a fort made of straw bales, I'm going to make a fort and it's gonna be, the wall is going to be giant sunflowers. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. We can hide in there. And then we can sneak out to the yellow raspberry bush and we can sneak out to the happy beast. And so if something has a really, really unique flavor, like really, really sweet or really, really sour, it'll really stand out to me. It's something that you wouldn't expect. And so purple calabash. This is a tomato that got recommended to me by Linda. And Linda's the tomato lady, so I know I have to try this tomato. That this, that's part of my plan for this year. And what's unique about it is it's supposed to have a smoky flavor. And so when I think of smoky, I think of smoked meat or fish. But a smoky tomato really sounded cool to me. I have heard of smoky tomatoes. I tried to grow one last year, but it didn't work. So I'm really excited because this is supposed to be a purple, smoky tomato. And this is a lychee tomato. You may have heard of this one and you may not. With, first of all, what's weird about it is the appearance of the plant. The plant is actually spiky, and so that's a disadvantage for you, but an advantage because it keeps the squirrels away. And so the squirrels will not get onto this plant, but it's actually a relative to the tomato. And to me, it's actually more like a cherry. It grows on like a tomato plant, but it actually tastes so sweet and delicious like a cherry. And so I think that tomatoes are really cool because of the colors, sizes, and then the flavors. There's the smoky flavors, the really, really sweet, and then there's the bland winter tomatoes. And so Carolina Reaper. At the moment, this is the hottest pepper on the planet in the universe. And so I don't know why, but my dad decided he would grow this pepper. 
and I, it, was just a, it was just a waste of space on the roof. He grew this pepper, and he gave it away to a neighbor to make sauce. He didn't try it. He didn't, he didn't dare to try it. We had some of our neighbors, they tried it, they uh, teared up. But it is so hot. But I found a solution. A few years, a few years ago, I grew this pepper, and it's a pepper called Fool of You. And it's a jalapeno pepper, so it's not, but what's unique about it is it's not hot at all. It is a jalapeno pepper with a delicious, beautiful taste, but it doesn't have any of the heat. So I could go to school and I could take a big bite of this, what was said to be hot pepper, and my friends, they could smell it, they could touch it, and they just couldn't figure it, figure it out. And so sorrel, uh, I love sorrel, it's really, really sour, and, what, and everyone in my family loves it. The giveaway is that when my dad told us about this plant, uh, we kind of grazed it, grazed it to the ground in less than a week. So it is definitely a family favorite, and it is super, super sour. So that's what's unique about it. So if you tried this, we could give it to our friends. It almost looks a bit like lettuce if you just take one leaf. But they will try, and they'll be so surprised because of the sourness. And so this is profusion sorrel from Richter's. It's the same thing, except it's bigger and even more sour. This is yellow wood sorrel. It is actually not related to the other, other sorrel at all. But it's really cool because it's also super sour. So it's, an, it's a weed to us in Toronto. And so we'll pull it out of the ground, we'll bite the whole top off, and we'll throw the weeds into the, where, into the wheelbarrow. And they don't, they don't seem very appealing to us. But you can eat the flowers, the flower buds, the stems, and the leaves, and they're super sour. This is nasturtium. I bet a lot of you have heard about this and tried it. And what's unique about it is it has a peppery flavor. So it really does taste like you put uh, pepper on an edible flower and an edible leaf. And I got really excited about this because I was talking to my friend Denise, who is an expert on edible flowers. And she said that she actually makes a lasagna with this. And I thought that would taste delicious. It would be a meat sauce, some pasta, and then it would have some nice nasturtium leaves, and on top, some nasturtium flower petals. And I thought that'd be really cool. But it's cool that this plant actually has a smoky flavor. Or not smoky, peppery. And so, I love herbs, and I think that herbs are really cool, because again, they have lots of different types. I have basil, which includes purple basil, green and purple basil, green basil. I have lots of types of basils, thymes, oreganos. But I was really excited this year because I started to get into mint. And I have actually haven't grown this mint yet. Well, this is just a normal mint. But I got really excited because I was going through the Richter's Herbs catalog. And I looked through it, and they had a big section on mint. And it wasn't just mint that you'll see in the store. It was mint that had names like cotton candy mint, ginger mint, lemon mint, and I'm like, that sounds super cool. And so I'm excited just by the name of it. It's supposed to smell and taste weird. So now I'm gonna have a, a mint container garden. So it's a bad idea for my dad to get me the catalog, because now he's gonna lose a lot more garden space. But I'm really excited about mint. Lots of you have probably heard of figs. Uh, I love figs, I think that they're really cool. And my dad is the fig pig. He loves figs. He has over 50 actual fig plants, 50 over 50 varieties. He saves cuttings, and he has a lot of fun with them. And so the inside of the fig is what really, really surprises me. It, uh, to me, it almost looks like jam, and it tastes like jam. But if it's perfectly ripe, it actually has the texture of honey. And it's so amazing. I'm, I'm so miss a fresh fig. But it's always a battle because I will sneak out the door for school, I'll pick a couple figs, and then at school during lunch, me and my friends will have a feast. And my dad always wonders where all the figs go. <laughs> and so this is a ground cherry, and I love ground cherries. They're one of my personal favorites. And what's cool about them is they actually are like a yellow golden cherry inside. But then they have this papery wrapper on the outside. And so it's cool because these ones, uh, they fall from the plant when they're ready, so if they're on the ground, you get this perfectly ripe golden cherry, and then you get this beautiful papery wrapper that you peel away to the delicious cherry inside. And then this is a cake gooseberry. It's a relative to the ground cherry. Uh, it's the same except it has an even sweeter, more intense flavor. 
And so I love gardening, and I think, really, all those cool crops make my garden fun, and they even make it fun for me and my brothers. And so I love the purple carrots, purple tomatoes, and I think that all those things really, they still surprise me when I find a new cool crop. And so this is me with the book I illustrated and wrote the captions for with my dad. Uh, and so this is a book about gardening with kids. And in this book, it talks a lot about fun activities to do with kids that gets kids into the garden. But it also, it talks a lot about cool crops because I think that kids love the cool crops. They love the purple carrots and the Mexican gherkins. And they think that that is really surprising and neat. And so, uh, there's Grow Gardeners, and I'm really excited, though, because uh, next year in the spring, spring 2018, I'm expecting a new book that me and Dad are doing. And the manuscript is actually doing three days to a publisher, Story Publishing, and the tentative title is Endless Garden, and I'm really excited about that. It's also going to be about gardening with kids, and we'll have lots of cool crops. And though I love trading seeds, I love sharing seeds, if you have any ideas, I love going, I love sharing seeds. I love if you have any ideas for more cool crops. So you can always email me. I'd love to share seeds. And thank you.